Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Joe and Emmy here. We're just in the house today. Emmy's helping me pack up for my next trip. I'm going to get ready to head out the door in a few days for another big old trip. Before that, I want to give a huge shout out to our sponsor, Audible. Audible has reached out and wanted to sponsor another video, so very cool. Oh, I'm undertaking a huge wilderness living trip coming up this spring, so I'm really researching a lot in this book that I've come across on Audible called Solitude, Seeking Wisdom in Extremes. It's about a guy who loses his lower right leg in a motorcycle accident and he ends up going to Patagonia with like lim limited supplies and going out to um, just live off the land and, and, and become a better person. So that's coming in handy. I really want to get all the information I can before I head out on there. Anyways, lots of really good stuff for that. And then also stuff for the whole family, not just wilderness stuff, obviously. Audible helps you listen to more books by letting you switch seamlessly between devices, picking up exactly where you left off, whether it's on your phone, through your car, from a tablet, or at home on an Amazon Echo. You can get through tons of books, hands and eyes free while doing almost anything. Audible members get a credit every month, good for any audiobook, regardless of price, and unused credits roll over to the next month. Didn't like your audiobook? You can exchange it, no questions asked. Plus, your books are yours to keep. With Audible, you can go back and re-listen anytime, even if you cancel your membership. Start a 30-day trial, and your first audiobook is free. Just go to audible.com slash robinette, that's R-O-B-I-N-E-T, or if you're in the States, you can text Robinette to 500-500. That's audible.com slash Robinette, R-O-B-I-N-E-T. Or if you're in the States, you have the option of texting Robinette to 500-500. Thanks guys so much for watching. Thanks again, Audible. Here's the video. Yo, how's it going guys? I'm pretty excited. I'm on my way out of the city right now. I'm driving up north. I'm going camping with a buddy, Brendan, who I haven't seen in over a year. Brendan is a buddy from college. We went to college in Sault Ste. Marie like, man, I don't know, ten, over 10 years ago. So, uh, yeah, pretty excited. I'm going to go camp with Brendan and his friend that I haven't met before. So, we're on our way up there now. It takes about two hours to get there. And I cannot wait. Came for two nights. Should be a good time. Where are you going, buddy? All right, pulling up at the Timmy's. Just about where I need to go, but I'm gonna get some lunch first uh, so I'm not walking in on an empty stomach. And dubs, breakfast. All right, just rolling up. We're gonna be in a farm bush, which is pretty cool. Nice and hard woody. I'll check back in with you guys once I've said hi to the boys. Well, I'm out in the woods now. I just found these guys out here. They're looking for a spot when I got out. I think I'm gonna make a natural shelter tonight. Maybe a debris shelter, no tools, no uh, no cordage, no tarps and stuff like that. Sleeping there. Those guys are just heading over there to the dry uh, level spot because over where we are right here is pretty wet. So I think I'm gonna go meet up with those guys, maybe introduce you. Scout? <laughs> What happened, bud? Say hi, Brendan. What's up? This is Brendan, buddy from college. You guys have seen him in a couple of videos, maybe a couple of years ago. Out hey, camping again. Good to see you, buddy. Good to be back. And this is new buddy Dave. Say hello, Dave. How we doing? He's uh, YouTube crowd. Scaring me with the knife. <laughs> Testing out the new custom handle. <laughs> so these guys are setting up here in this nice, clear spot, and that's where we'll, we'll hang out. I've been looking around. And I think, for my purposes, this is the best bet. I'm trying to do an all-natural sh uh, shelter, not tying anything up or anything. So this tree behind me, you can see it's fallen. It's actually caught in the crook of, the tr of, of a fork in a tree. It seems like it's been here for years. It's very, very solid. There's no chance in it falling or, or, or moving. So I feel like if I take a bunch of dead sticks, I line them up, boom, 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 up here, leave a little door, do some more, round it off about here, do the sail on the back, I'll have this nice little spot I can sleep, and then this back log, you can see that what I'm kicking is a nice um, wind block and something to kind of snuggle up against, keep me comfy. The ground is kind of damp, uh, it's like frozen mud really, so I am going to leave these leaves that are directly underneath where I'm going to lay um, there. I'll clean up the leaves around and use them for, for thatching and stuff, but I do want them on the ground. I also have my bivy to keep me up off of the, uh, the wetness. So I guess the first thing to really start doing is just start picking up things like this off the ground and laying them 
where they fit on here. I don't really want to start breaking them, but laying them where they fit until I find, until I run out of things like that. So I guess I will build up to here, leave a small door that I can access on the side and come in and turn and lay sideways. this half rotten log on the ground I can buck it up into sections and use it for pieces lengths that I need got my grants first Brooks out uh, not outdoor axe Scandinavian forest axe that I got from the Canadian outdoor equipment in Canada surprise surprise Good. This log that's in front of me here, I'll use it as a guide for where to stop or where to put the, the poles, like where to start them, because this is going to be again where I rest my back against. It's going to be pretty comfortable, pretty pretty decent. Enough room just to lay down. Uh, sorry, enough room for my body, but enough head height that I can sit up and uh, get changed and whatnot. Because this will be my tent. I don't have any other shelter. My tent. Check it out. There's some puff balls. Not got too much dust left in them. But a fold? Now <laughs> uh, working up a sweat doing this. I do have quite a few layers on. So I can afford to lose some. The old Fall Raven granite shirt on today. I haven't worn this on a camp in a while. It was the old tree coat hanger. <sighs> Coming along. Uh, I'm, I'm making them pretty steep. I'm making the walls pretty steep. The tree itself that's going to be my roof, more, more or less, is very wide and it almost covers my whole body uh, width. So it's really good for rain protection that way. And as long as I keep the walls very straight up, it's going to have no problem shedding the rain. I'm going to put a bunch of sticks and debris and leaves and grass and stuff on top of that and cover it all in. My main problem, I think, I'll come and show, I'll show you, is going to be at the end closing it off. I'm going to have to come up with a solution. Come on, I've only spent a couple minutes on it to be honest with you. It's lots of material to work with. So it's really flat in here, which is awesome. I'm gonna have a good level of sleep. Um, this is what I mean, right here, this area. It's not gonna be hard, it's not gonna be impossible by any means, it's just gonna be a little bit more difficult. I don't know if I'm gonna end up finding big slabs of wood that have fallen off trees 
and stacking them lengthways or what unless I can wedge something very wide here I don't want I don't want to try to just prop it up because it's dangerous it can fall on me right so I want if I can wedge something very strong then I'll do that um, I am going to lay with my head on this side and my feet down there let's test it out look at this big old fungi what a fungi it's a dad joke if I ever heard one Oh, wrong way. Wrong way. So this is basically big enough. I'll make it out a, a, another foot uh, longer. And then like I said earlier, my head, or sorry, my whole body is basically underneath this, um, this log, this tree. So it's really, really good protection. Okay. Solutions. We've got some big slabs here some cottonwood tree not bark but they're not big enough to go on the outsides or on the uh the end there so from here try and build up this part like this it's so shabby just stack them up there and if not i can still get other logs to go on there but nice little part well bye son dave had a good idea of how to uh, finish off the end here. I'm gonna put two tall ones near the end. See that one right there sticking up higher? I'm gonna put another one on this side tall and then on the top of it, we're gonna put one going horizontal. That's the word. Yeah. Horizontal is the word. Um, and then that's gonna be locked in there and then we can lean logs on the outside. Hopefully that makes sense. It will, if it doesn't now, it will soon. <laughs> Room you got on your side? Uh, I gotta get two like and a half feet here. Two feet. Yeah, I got yeah. two feet. Okay, so it's probably in the middle. We're gonna need to secure that better. Yeah, make these gather material. Yeah, we're gonna need to yeah to lock this in with big big logs. Yeah, you do the same on the other side. It should. Yeah, yeah. And then once you start laying branches or sticks to this way, it'll lock it all. Over. Exactly. I got a Y here too. That might help actually. Yeah, we'll that'd prop be... it up in the Y. Yeah. It's not long enough, but. I can can do that. Just trying to lock everything in place here. It's nice to have help. Can it sit in there? And that way, yeah, that's even better, right? Do that on the other side too. Yeah, she's getting there for sure. And then, yeah, once everything's leaned on it, like you're saying, yeah. just pushing against there. It yeah, it'll lock all up. Well, bam. Cool. Dun, 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 dun. Bam, son. Use the beard. <laughs> the beard is powerful with this one. We worked long enough. I think we need some sips of beverages. I've got some Quebec beers and some Texas and some Iowa beers and also Canadian beers. So, do you guys need a beer? Yes. I do. Yes, I can use a beer. Alright. Uh, let's try and pick. I want, I would like something fruity. So I'm probably going to go with like maybe this one. It says Citra, Mosaic, and Galaxy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm taking that one. You guys go ahead and take whatever ones you want. Grab a beer. Double IPA. Double IPA from oh Iowa, that one. Ooh, that's a lot. That's a lot to deal with. That's a Quebecer. IPA du Nord Est. I might have to try this catnip. The catnip, yeah. Catnip? Yeah. yeah, we might have to do a little pass around on these beers. Yeah, totally. 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 <laughs> do you know French? No. No, me either. Do you know French, Brennan? Hell no. All right. Three Canadians, non-French. Basically, it means craft. Le par pas anglais. That's the only French I know. I can translate. Sans French, not a Vec French. So, is it going to be the Sam Squanch or the Nordest? I think I'm going to go with the Nord. Of course. Do it for the gram. Yeah. Do it for the coach. All right, boys. Cheers, some. Cheers, boys. 
Mm, smells good. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's quite nice. Ooh. Should we just yeah, clean our friends uh, off and, yep. and maybe pass them around? Take your friends, get them off your beer. Yeah. And cool. uh, pass them to your friends. <laughs> Very nice. Mm, I like that. Which one haven't I drank? That one? Yes. That one's tasty. What do we got here? It's the catnip. Extra pale. You know what, lager. guys? They all taste very, very similar, don't they? Like a, in all reality. Yes. Yeah. Mm. All this good, one, though. This one's got a good finish in that. I am. It's tangy. I'm happy with this one. So, yeah. this one is. Um, six percent, so it's not so bad. What do you guys got? Uh, I've got a six percent as well. This one's got a little bit of a uh, crisper finish. Bit bitter though. or no? No, it's not bitter. What are you working with? It's actually quite smooth. I got a seven and a half. Well, you're up there. I guess I won that battle. <laughs> or lost, or whichever. Lost. It's still we'll early. See you oh. later. Tense up. You can have a nap. <laughs> but this one's quite smooth, actually. Yeah, I'm happy. The catnip is a different kind of can, so mm -hmm. happy That's with this. Good. This is from Jean Philippe and David. So thanks, guys. And I feel like I have to say Jean Philippe in a French way every single time I say it. So. <laughs> Cheers. 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 Shelter's coming along really good. It's nice to have some help, like I said. Building it uh, a lot quicker than it, if it were just me. Let me take you around and show you. Still got lots to do. Still got lots to do, even. I see Brendan out there working. We're trying to grab some bark to put on top of this. So, got a good base. We're starting to put the smaller sticks on now. For the leaves to have something to grab onto, we, um, our pole idea worked well, kind of just stacking everything up. That's the end there where we, where I said would might have been the hardest part to do. Still a little bit of gaps, but got still more work to do. Like I said, there's the other side. Is that bark? Yeah. Nice man. Very cool. Is there more over there? Anyway. Pardon? Is there more to grab over there? Should be a bit more we can get. There's got to be more downed uh, maples like this too. Cool. So maybe just toss it down for now before. Yep. Yeah. Thanks. Cool. Yeah. So you can see there's lots of gaps. We're nowhere near done. Where's Brandon's? Hello. Oh well. How are you? I feel like a creep. Yeah, you are a creep. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Brendan's a true friend. I hate you, Joe. Thank you. <laughs> Brendan's a true friend. No, no. I love you, Joe. <laughs> You're a good guy. Thank you. So. You taught me everything I know. Oh, that's scary. No, I mean as far as bushcraft goes. That's scary. Even so yeah, we're in here. <laughs> we in here. Awkward. <laughs> you want to come in, come in and check it out. Speaking of awkward. Yeah, it, it'll fit. I guarantee it'll you. It'll fit. You can, yeah, it's pretty small. Oh yeah, it's a little tight. So is this our group shelter? You coming in, Dave? Oh, I'll be there. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> 
no, oh, yeah. no. Technically, it's a three man. Oh, yeah, yeah, three man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, uh, just go down there. <laughs> yeah, that's that's your door down there. Right? <laughs> yeah. You trap that time. heat. Good times. Yeah, all right. Times. So next step, we're going to rake up all sorts of leaves and debris off the forest floor, like some aminals, and <laughs> pile it on. Hey, baby girl. This is Nala. She's a pretty German Shepherd. Come here, big girl. Nala. What's this? Come here. Sit. Hey, sit. Hey, Nala. Sit. Good girl. Give me pause. You got pause for me? Oh, what a good girl. What a good girl. So she's a pretty, pretty German Shepherd. Come on, let's check this out. Come here. What's this, Nala? Look in here. What's that? Go in. Go in. Come on. Hey. Come on. What are we doing? What is this, hey? Come here. Come here. What are you doing? What's this? Go on. Call her, Brendan. Nala is the neighbor's uh, German Shepherd. She's five years old. Very cool dog. Very smart. Got me a little muddy. <laughs> Sorry, Scout. Don't watch this. You want a stick? Do you want a stick? Yes, I do. Here, Brendan. Here, Brendan. 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 Here, Nala. Good girl. So I've, I've raked up as much as I can with my hands and my feet from this immediate area. I've got mostly sticks and leaves from this area, but just over there where the tents are, there's this grass. So I'm going to try and use that as much as possible. Now, like I said, I have raked it up from here. So I have a good base of like two or three feet of leaves and sticks going up already on the, on the ground. So now I'm layering on top of it like I should. So bottom first, up, 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 as you do with shingles. Oh, and Brendan was able to grab some uh, big bark slabs too. So we got those on the back. There's a bunch of blue jays flying around right now. <laughs> he just shakes his head. Brendan's been a friend since the days that people called me Joey. Since my name was changed to Joe. Remember that? Yeah. Not Joe. You're still Joey. I am still Joey to him. I'll be your Joey. All right, so on the, on the back you can see some of those bark slabs. This is a true debris hut. No, uh, no cordage, very little tools used. I don't think I used my ax and my tomahawk a couple times, but Tons of different kinds of debris all, all on it, all on top it. Okay, get back to work. Dave's gone. He's been gone for about an hour or so. He's coming back tonight. So, Brendan and I are working on this. Where would you like it? getting there gotta get more layers on but everything's sticking pretty good I want to put uh, after I go around and get everything all covered with grass and leaves I'm gonna put some sticks to hold it in place put some more stuff on it after more more debris more debris Debris. we getting there though we getting now looking good 
Who needs a tent? It's uh, it's getting nice and warm. I got stripped down to a tee. This is because I'm working too, but beauty. It feels nice out, eh? Beautiful day out. It is. It's good to get together, man. Yeah, man. It's good to be back. Haven't camped in a little while. Haven't seen Joe in, oh God, forever. So, yeah, it's nice to be back out here. Blech. All right, quick thing here. I wanted to go go over. Uh, I had a lot of comments saying in my Walmart video that I don't know how to use a saw and that I'm using it wrong. Uh, you guys are couldn't be more from the truth. I'm actually putting pressure down. So what they were saying is I'm cutting it like this and I'm having it bind or whatever or I'm having the wrong end hold over. Like I guess they're thinking that I should have the more weight hanging off and having having this up here. But again, it's hard for me to describe, but when I'm cutting, I'm pushing pressure with my hand. Like I do know how to cut wood. Like regardless of what you think or regardless of anything, I've been cutting wood for a very long time and I do know how to do it properly. So what I'm doing here, you might see this and think, oh, it's going to pinch up, but 100% I'm pushing down pressure with this hand. Not as much pressure to keep it up off the ground because then it gets wobbly, but enough where it's not going to bind. I really do know what I'm doing in this case. I, I, I don't claim to know a lot of things, don't get me wrong, but I know what I'm doing here. This would be binding if I was doing it wrong. I wouldn't be able to saw it all the way through to the very end without it binding. So again, putting downward pressure on this side, even though this is the short side, and you would assume that I need the long side hanging off, the fulcrum point or whatever it's called for the gravity to pull it down, I am using pressure going the other way. Again, like this, it's here. If it was going to pinch, it would pinch, but it's not going to. It was 100% the saw. I'm not pushing down. I'm leaving this completely gravity free, like just hanging, not gravity free, sorry, uh, pressure free, hanging while I'm pushing down on this part, pushing this part down. I guarantee that what I'm saying is correct. PSA. Sometimes it's down to the equipment you're using. I just look like a little kid. You know, it is, it was the equipment, 100%. It's a freaking Walmart saw, bud. Uh, I find that's perfect. Yeah, that's kind of, you use two hands or one with this thing? Uh, I use, I use uh, the second as a guide. There you go. And, she split most of the way. You see that? Probably just pop it in there, pop it right off. Those guys are a little long for a hatchet that size. But that works decent. Does the job. Let's try her again. There you go. Bam! It's kind of fun, a little different. You want your feet up in front of the uh, the wood that you're working on. I've made that mistake before, so if you glance off, you're not going to hit it. Yeah, pretty decent, pretty decent. So we're just getting uh, stuff ready to make a fire. It's coming up on five o'clock, so. Be supper time soon. What do you got? What are you gonna make for supper today, Vernon? I think tonight I'm gonna do some shepherd's pie. Ooh, shepherd's pie. Good. You got dehydrated or no? No, actually, that's uh, Sherry Fletcher's uh, famous homemade shepherd's pie. Ooh, thanks, Ma. It's gonna be real good. Nice. I think I'm gonna do lamb chops. Excellent. Ba bam chops. I do believe Dave has a uh, brisket on the docket for tonight. Ooh. Yeah, we're gonna be uh, eating like kings. No peasant life. Nope. As you've come to Hashtag expect. No peasant life. Yeah, I've been wearing them for about five years. I've done a lot of research into them. Um, the prices you pay are for the amount of return effort that they are putting into their uh, not only their gear but um, the outdoors. Right. No, they're good. They're good stewards and everything. And um, you, you know what? They have a legit return and all that stuff. And honestly, like I have. I don't own a single piece of Patagonia gear that I would ever think about having to return. I have the Houdini. Love it. Oh, that thing's fantastic. That's like... I actually am thinking about getting that just as an emergency layer. Here, put um, this down. Oh, yeah, actually, yeah. Let's put the base down. Get going.
This is a bunch of turkey vultures right above us. Uh, turkey vulture, vultures eat carrion or dead stuff. Look at them, one, two, three, four, five, six, at least. All over the, we're not food. Oh my gosh. Hello. <laughs> 20 minutes ago I was in this uh, t-shirt and it started snowing. It got really cold and I got bundled up. And now the sun's back out and it's nice again. I'm not complaining, it's just strange. I guess that's how spring is. This one is 5.2%. Uh, Brewing can by Deep Ellum Brewing Company, Dallas, Texas. Tejas. Something tells me I'm gonna like it. Oh wow, that smells uh, almost loggery as well, actually. How is it? That's um, not very IPA like at all. Is that even an IPA? It's a session ale, it said. Yeah, it's a session ale, so. That's not, very calm. Not getting quite close to an IPA, but. Is it a lager? It tastes lagery. It'd be a little more of a lager, yeah. A little more of a lager, he said. Anyway, it's pretty good. Citrusy and floral hot. That's I, actually I, really good. I don't get citrus out of it, but it's it's pretty, pretty tame. It's mellow, though. It's yeah. mellow, which isn't bad in the daytime, right? Just like that sun. Mm -hmm. Take your friends. Take your friends with you. There you go. Go to the woods. <laughs> Bring your neck beard. <laughs> you. <laughs> Let's show. You edit that out. Let's show the people. You haven't. You haven't. You haven't cut that since the last time we, we were camped together, or have you? Uh, no. The old, Lightly trimmed, but the little neck beard. <laughs> you can say, look at that in epicness. All glory. I uh, I'm I'm pretty jealous of the old beard. I don't know if I'd let it go that long, but. Well, you know, when you don't give a you look You do look like a gnome. You have that red hat on, a big old bird. Well, you don't have to. You're pretty short already. And ow, that, ow, Joe. <laughs> and then the blue. That's, that's funny, coming from a guy who's an inch shorter than let's, me. Let's see. Who's taller? Son of a gun. There we go. Not too shabby. Okay, I'm not sure if that was any easier or not, but I used it nonetheless. So again, the sun's out, it's beauty. It is uh, supper time. So I think I'm gonna call it quits on building the shelter for tonight. It's like literally 95% done. It does need some more thatching. Um, not calling for rain tonight. Said tomorrow possibility of rain tomorrow night. So we will, um, I'm gonna finish it up tomorrow. But it's supper time. Really hungry. Doesn't look like we're losing light right now. We have one, two hours of light left and it's six o'clock. So late to late, eh? Yeah. Wow. Getting springy. It's springy. It's gonna dip down a little bit chillier tonight, so I brought my negative 10. I think it's going to get to negative four or five, but I want to be comfortable. Um, got my negative 10. I won't be able to use it for much more for this year anyway. Again, I have my bivy sack, which is great for this kind of thing. The, the ground is mud in there. There's going to be possibility of ticks because of all this grass. So if I can just get right in this bivy sack and close her up, I'm gonna be good. I do like using it again with. Like my last trip, man, just like reiterated it. It's you don't you don't roll off your bag. You don't um, nothing moves around when you're in a in a bivy sack. Like I have my sleeping pad and my sleeping bag in here, so a nice cocoon of warmth and dryness. Let's go toss her in the old debris hut. Oh yeah, look at that, perfect, perfect. So I got just enough room in this shelter to put my backpack at the bottom by my feet, which is pretty cool. Put that down there. Head down that away. I got a decent 
amount of space above. You can see some, uh, some light coming through. That's still gotta get all thatched up, but that's no problem. And then I can also use this, ta this uh, log as a table. Like I can put um, whatever I need, my toilet paper, my headlamp there for in the middle of the night. Um, it's a pretty nice setup. I'm, I'm really actually digging it quite a bit. The beauty of that debris shelter, you don't need any tools, you don't need any rope, you don't need any anything really. You just pile a bunch of stuff. What do you think? Not bad at all. You like her? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. She just rips her. She rips her butt. Getting pretty hungry here. Fire's going great. We're just collecting more firewood because we threw a ton on to get, to get good coals. Three guys have to cook food on the coals, so kind of uh, take some time and, and space. Time and space. So for tonight, I'm gonna go with my lamb chops. Fresh Ontario lamb chops. I think I got four of them in here. They're already marinated and everything right from the butcher, so I'm interested in having those. And then I'll have a steak for tomorrow. I'm not going to do the rare steaks any, at all anymore, even though the past few times they've been not rare, uh, just for my guts and my and my uh, all that goings on down there. But um, yeah, that's for tomorrow, and I got some steak spice on that. But tonight, lamb chop. Remember lamb chop? Remember the show Lamb Chop? <laughs> A little annoying hand puppet. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead. I'll, I'll, I guess I'll. There, there you go. <laughs> I guess I'll allow that. All right, look at these bad boys. Oh hell Some yeah! Little zam chis ups. Oh, sizzle. That original sizzle, eh? Ah, a little flame broiled, a little too much flame broiled. Nothing. Dinner is served. Mm. Cherry broiled. Cheered them. All right, guys. Some flame broiled lamb choppies. Nice and hot, right off the grill. I gotta, you know what? Let these cool for one second. I'm getting. A little smoky. I have a Hawaiian style pale ale. This one is from Ontario, I believe. Toronto. Nice and close. Mmm, Hawaiian y. <laughs> Alright, dig in. Dude, that was pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what marinade they have on there, but a little rosemary and some olive oil look like. Mm. Definitely rosemary. Yeah. I love lamb. So you love lamb? I love lamb. Great kill again. Song with a trident? <laughs> <laughs> Seen some. <laughs> you see the second one? Uh, bits and pieces of it. Wasn't as good. Drake oh. was in the beginning for yeah, some reason. Yeah. yeah, it's never as good as the original. No. Super they're making a second Super Troopers. Yeah, I saw that's coming out. They did a Zoolander too. Uh-huh. That was, yeah. Yeah. Whatever. How do you, how do you do a Zoolander too? What's that? How do you do a second Zoolander, no, really? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> no so that's it's a little overcooked on that one, but I believe the ones down here. Let's take a little bite on this guy. Oh man. Okay, so on the chop, you probably know this. Mm -hmm. There's a tender side and a normal side, yeah, yeah, yeah. like a like a like a T-bone. Yeah, yeah, inside the bone, in the middle. 
The inside part is tender. Yeah. Like, like hoy. Super tender. I'm getting smoked out. Okay. No, they're all all the same. Very good. Mm -hmm. Medium well. That fat is nice. Mm -hmm. Wow. I gotta move. I'm getting smoked right <laughs> out. Free smoke, free smoke. I got some homemade hot sauce. I know, I know what you guys are saying. I'm gonna go easy on it. Just a couple drops on one. Just to taste it. So Dave made this. What did you say you made it out of? Uh, we got a mixture of scotch bonnet, habanero, cayenne, um, and then it's charred over the open fire and then mixed with apple butter. Damn. As much problems as I've been having, I can't turn down the taste of that. And I only put a couple little drops so I'm just six or seven decent <laughs> drops. We'll eat that one last so we taste it. I made the mistake one time of going to, you have a smoking spice around here? No. It's like a southern barbecue okay. smoke. Right. So we go there. I've been there a few times. And we go and I want to try the, the hot sauce. And I order this big meal. I make the mistake of putting the hottest sauce first on the wing. I put a bunch of it. I oh, burned my yeah. tongue. I could never taste the rest of the meal <laughs> at all. Like, <laughs> like derp, 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 derp. Ruin. Ruin. <laughs> yeah, that was the goal with this thing. I always hated hot sauces that were just hot. Mm. Didn't have any flavor to it. Like, hot, that's yeah. The point, right? It hurt, yeah. Yeah, so I like hot stuff, but it has to have like something. Like a reason. It. Yeah. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. You ever watch um, Hot Ones? Hot Ones, yeah. Yeah, yeah. with Sean Evans. Yeah, I like that. I like a lot. that a lot, yeah. <laughs> He's a really good interviewer. Mm -hmm. You see the Rachel Ray one? No. She refused to eat the, the wings. She was up on her pedestal or whatever, mm -hmm. but she, they kept calling it mainlined it. She kept taking teaspoons of the hot sauce oh, instead of eating the wings. wings. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking like legit teaspoons, man. Teaspoons, yeah, that'd be a lot. To uh huh. Because even on the last dab thing they do, they just literally dab. You know what I mean? They're not like soaking it at all. And yeah, she's yeah. like tossing down. <laughs> Rachel Ray. We're losing light. Yep. We've got a pretty nice sunset going on. So I think for the rest of the night, the plan is to just sit here, consume the rest of our beers, enjoy uh, just camping, you know? Just enjoy it. Maybe tell some lies by the fire. <laughs> I got some tall tales. <laughs> yep, I know. <laughs> what was your, what, what, what strikes you as one of the most memorable things we did in college? College. It was our uh, first winter camp. Um, yeah. Our trees professor, who was a big backcountry guy, um, took us out. We went up to Hiawatha Highlands in the middle of winter. Uh, we built Quincy's. Mm -hmm. uh, probably took us about, what, six hours total to get them all Full day, set for up. sure. Yeah. Tell, tell the folks at home what a Quincy is in case they don't know. So a Quincy is essentially um, an igloo without ice. What you do is you... Uh, Get a nice big pile of snow about uh, two or three meters high. It takes you about uh, an hour or two to dig this pile up. How long you, a boot? About two or three hours. Boot two or a three? All right, all right, all right. Then you got to let it settle for another two hours so <laughs> that it all compacts it. down. Um, and then you go in and start tunneling it out. And oot. by the time you're done, oot, oot, oot. yeah, you got to tunnel it out. <laughs> by the time you get her done there, <laughs> you, got, you, got yourself, you got yourself a place to sleep there. Yeah, bud. <laughs> yeah, that's a nice little ice cave there, bud. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, no, for real, though, what are you saying? It, it, yeah, so that, so anyway, continue with your story. Um, so, yeah, we spent, what was it, two nights there? Two nights, yep. Um, just sleeping in these little ice caves. We had the first night, I think it got down to about minus 27. We had a blizzard come in. I remember getting up in the middle of the night to go to the washroom and just being like blown away that I can't believe I'm actually out here right now. Remember how how much it sucked going getting out to go to the washroom? That was before like oh the pee bottle. Dude, that era. was like <laughs> you know what okay, I mean. So you're crawling through a tunnel um, like ice of ice, of yeah. ice you know, and you're like maybe skimmy. about like yeah. this big around. <laughs> And you've rolled up your long sleeves because you don't want to get them wet. <laughs> and you're like on your elbows and knees like, uh, this sucks. 
So, you know, you end up peeing on your friend's Quincy and then they yell at you the next morning. <laughs> Try not to wake up your Quincy partner as you do the whole process. So that, after that, I think is when I started implementing the uh, the old pee bottle. Oh, yeah. Because, That's you know, a lifesaver. it's a lifesaver in that kind of situation. Just make like, sure you label that bottle correctly. Right. This is not lemonade. It's, it's not morning no. apple juice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, where is my morning apple juice? Oh, thank God. <laughs> yeah, that is a really good memory, actually. I, I agree. That is probably one of the coolest things. Do you remember um, us having the fire and how, what happened? Like how we... Oh, yeah. We, we set the fire up and basically kept building it and building it and eventually it just melted and melted and melted to the point where we could actually carve ourselves these little snow Ooh, we sat around yeah we sat around the whole we thing like all the, on the pine way. boughs and put them down yep. for insulation yeah it was awesome yeah it was perfect it we was were like, actually sitting probably a good two or three feet down into the, i think it was like four ground. or five yeah. it was a whole we had lot to like of snow crawl up out of it for just sure to get back yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was very cool. It was. It was really cool. And that year when we both went there, we went there the same year, um, obviously. It was one of the years they had the most snow. I think they got over 10 feet of snow that year. And yeah. they had, like, actual plows for the sidewalks and everything. It was just something oh, it was crazy. that I was not used to at that all. Was... Our, our teacher, Don Hall, like he was saying, he was he was very cool. He's a guy I've always, ref I've always referenced as, like, a Gandalf kind of dude. <laughs> Take your friends and your books and go, go to the, the woods. woods. <laughs> if you have your books... And your friends go to the woods. Go to the woods. If you're in the woods, call your friends. Tell them to bring the books. Tell them to bring the books. <laughs> and remember, use the bark, Luke. All right, boys and girls, heading on into the cave of wonders. <laughs> Hatchet in hand. I'm pretty cold. I'm. Uh, I'm really glad that I brought my negative 10 degree sleeping bag because I don't know what it is, but. I'm cold. So, I want to climb on in and uh, and warm up. And I'll, I'll keep you guys with me because I'm not going to bed just yet. I just kind of wanted to come in here and warm up and, and lay down and relax before I went to bed. It's, uh, one second here, 10.48. It's almost 11. Because 10.48 is almost 11. Look at that. Perfect. Okay. The uh, the camera's on the log next to me. Here's my tripod. Going up here with my hatchet or my tomahawk. I always like to sleep with some kind of thing like that. Not that I'm too concerned, but if I ever need to, it's nice to have it. So boots are going next to me. Um, my pee bottle there. I'm going to put my pants in my sleeping bag because when I get up in the morning I'm gonna put them on and they'll be cold if I don't do that. So jacket go up there unless I need it. I definitely don't want to make the mistake of going to bed with too many layers on because I'm cold right now and then getting too warm in the middle of the night and then sweating <clears throat> and creating condensation in my sleeping bag and all sorts of stuff like that especially considering I'm sleeping out here tomorrow night too. Pretty good. Whoa. I don't think I'm gonna do this thing up quite all the way. Leave my head out of the bivy. You folks have a good night. Wish me luck in here. Actually, I, like I said, I have such a, a, a homely feeling looking up. I wonder if I could show you my view. Looking up and seeing this big tree and just all the logs. Let me see if I can show you what I'm talking about. Like this is literally my view. That's about right above my head. It looks so cool. All right, folks. You have a good night. And I'll get with you in the morning. We'll cook up some nice bacon. Some nice bacon as opposed to not nice bacon. And eggs, maybe. Got all that stuff. So we'll have a full day out here tomorrow and tonight. So I will see you guys in the morning. Probably said that three times. See you guys in the morning. See you guys in the morning. All right, see you guys in the morning. <laughs> Good night.
morning. I slept really well. Had a good night's sleep. I stayed warm and dry. 7.58 right now. I never heard those guys rustle or anything this morning, so I'm sure they're still in bed. I can't see them. They did stay up quite a bit later than me. A couple cardinals chasing each other. This is nice. This is a nice shelter, man. I'll pack a little bit of more, more debris on it today, but very good. Okay, pants, pantaloons at the bottom. So I think, oh yeah, this is soaked in condensation. That sucks. I gotta dry this up tonight. I'll have to hang it out in the, uh, in the sun. This thing is drenched. That's the problem with this bivy, man. I thought I lost some, some warmth uh, early hours in the morning. I'm still fine, I didn't get too cold or anything. But this will have to get hung up. You can hear it, right? It's wet. She's a wet one. But that's okay, it's sunny. It's quite sunny out. So. Should dry off relatively quick. Where are them pants are? Get, get over. There they are. Not one foot at a time. You know? You know? Oh, it's so cold. So cold. Okay. I'm gonna pee. I'm gonna crawl back in my sleeping bag. Warm myself up a bit. Oh my goodness, she's bright, guys. She's bright. Maybe I'm not getting back in bed. It's not wet on the outside. It is on the bottom, I guess. But just like a little wet from the mud. But on the inside, it's drenched. See, it's actually slick, actually wet. So, lots of condensation anyway on these things. They don't really breathe. So, if you're not getting wet from the outside, you're getting wet from the inside, just like Gore Tex. But they do have their place for sure. It's not that bad. I'm going to try it again tonight and leave it completely unzipped and see if that makes a difference. But I'll hang this stuff up and it'll dry in no time. Getting hungry. Got lots of food for breakfast, but it takes a while to cook, so I'm gonna have to get a fire going. Everything is covered in frost. I just went around and gathered some sticks, some small stuff. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> so I'm hoping that I can just blow this. Oh yeah, there's a lot of residual heat coming off of that. Oh, 100%. Alright, cool. We're going to be able to blow this into flames. Um, less effort is always nice. Yeah. Perfect. I couldn't really find too much very small twigs. I grabbed some reeds from the field and stuff, but a lot of the things that I found have um, condensation and dew on them. Brendan's going out to look for some smaller stuff now. All, you, all I'm gonna try to do here is pile everything in the, in the middle and blow it into flames. The idea behind having it all piled, is it kinda just grows on each other. Even the, um, the old pieces, this one's a little wet because it was a danky piece when we put it on, so that's probably not the best case, but the one I picked up earlier, this one here, she's already starting to smoke, actually. Very cool. Very cool. If I get rid of this big wet piece. Nice. Yeah, I haven't even started to blow on it. It's already started to smoke.
I'm gonna get my fanning that tool, my sit pad. There she goes. Pump it in that one. So I'm gonna warm up the old hands. Oh, hands too cold. Hands too cold. So I'm pretty hungry. Yeah, I could eat. Bacon? Yep. So somebody last night flipped this chair over so that the frost wouldn't, you know, get on the seat part. It was a that was Joe! Oh that was Joe. Look at frost free, bro. Good lord. Hey. It must be some kind of woods magician. Sick with me, kid. <laughs> Bam, son. Needs to get some more wood on the plant. Well, we can officially say the ground's thawed. Yeah, well, here at least, right? Where the fire's been. <laughs> We need a cross piece there. I'll cut some wood. Alright. Some world. Some bacon. Put that on. It's Mr. Brendan's birthday today. So we cook up some bacons for it's bre my birthday. A bacon birthday breakfast. Yes. <laughs> I am the bacon globa lob. Anyone? Shovel gobble glibber lobber libber lobber dog. No one gets your references, Joe. Some people will get this. I guarantee a few people will get that. I am not one of them. You are. I showed you it. Yeah, I still don't get it. <laughs> I am. <laughs> I am the yeast of thoughts and mind. What? 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 <laughs> Oh my goodness. I was really wishing I could use this footage. <laughs> you need your whole trip, Joe. All your footage is going to be junk. Uh, my nose will not stop running off of my face. You need the Kleenex. The Kleenex! Invented in 1937. John Kleenex! It's actually called facial tissue. Kleenex is a brand name. Yes. Is there something on my nose? Let's see. Now you're good. Oh, nice. Yeah, you're fine. Perfect. Now it's a nice morning, guys. The sun did go away, which kind of sucks, because it was nice having it out. I felt the warmth off of it. I'm glad I dried my stuff out when I did. It actually all dried out, so everything's good. It's all still hanging up behind me. But, like I said, no sun. The birds are singing, the bacon's on, I'm nice and comfy in this chair, so everything's really good. We built up this fire a little bit. It's gonna take a little while for this bacon to cook, I'm sure of it, but that's okay. I'm gonna sit around, hang out. Dave had to leave, he had to hike back out, but uh, he'll be back oh, early, or sorry, later on today. It's fun hanging out with people. It's fun hanging with Brendan. I haven't seen him in so long. It's like I don't really get to hang out with friends that I've I've, I've had for a long time. You know, I mean, nobody's into this stuff that that I grew up with or that I've known for a long time. So it's nice. We've had to switch up our cooking method a little bit. The wind's blowing too strong to cook it uh, to actually cook the bacon. The wind's taking the heat away, so we've pushed our fire in front of the bacon because the wind is blowing that way. We've added the the reflector oven, which is cooking the bacon a little bit faster. So you can see there, cooking it pretty good. We've also been able to eat a few pieces already because the reflector oven is cooking them much faster, actually. So it's getting smoked on here, finishing them up in the reflector, all is well. A little crispy, but not too crispy. Bacon with Brendan and his beard on his birthday. <laughs> this is in bacon shin. The bacon is dripping on the other bacon. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> There's a whole bunch of deer up on the ridge. We're trying to get over to them to get a little view for you guys, but they might take off. There you go. See them? Three of them. There you go. There they go. They're gone. All right, bacon's done. I'm gonna share this plate. A nice cup of hipster drinking chocolate. Drinking chocolate. I don't know. It's from Portland. I got some eggs. Oh yeah. Those are good with bacon. You want an egg? And egg. Yeah. Yeah. You could go for an egg. I'll give you one. I have two. Oh, sweet. I'll give you one. Yeah. And egg. An egg. Be excellent. <laughs> I can't tell if he's being sarcastic or not. No, I'm not. I'm not. An egg would be fantastic. <laughs> okay, we're gonna cook up two an eggs. Time to make up some eggs. So I'm gonna go on the search for stuff to make a pot hook. I'm gonna make the Birkinsville, Burtonsville rig, Birkenstock, the Birkenstock rig. Make it out of sandals. Yep. Cool. No problem. It's a pretty gray day. It was supposed to be sunny. She's a gray day. All right, I got a shoot here. I'm gonna take this one and I'll show you how to do it after I take it down. Back to the camp. I've got my sapling I took. Here is the crook, here's the Y. I'm gonna cut it right below the Y. I'm gonna just use Brennan's while they fetch it. So I cut it exactly where I wanted to, right below. There has, there's no, oh, where are we? There's not a far, drop with more stick below it to impede this between the pot so it's right at the at the cross which is I want what I wanted and then now I want to leave a lip big enough for a pot hook where my my pot's gonna hang so I'm gonna cut it big enough because this is kind of a weird shape it kind of just goes out straight as opposed to right being up so we're gonna cut it far enough away. Like that. So there's our pot hook. And we don't need to make it extremely long, but maybe we'll we'll take it up to here. See how I could have cut it here where this Y is, but maybe we'll just take it up a little bit higher till it starts to bend, because we might want that extra height after. So to cut it, I'm gonna use the ax again. this off so you can see the pot hook starting to come into shape this piece that we chopped off already still has a use but that's gonna be the part that holds our actual pot hook up so we can start working on this one first what we do with this piece is we're gonna make the tip into like a flathead screwdriver you want to see how it's going to sit best first, right? Because this has a little cant to it. It's probably not going to want to sit like this the best. It's probably going to want to sit like this because of how it's shaped, right? So stuck into the ground. That means I want to point it out this way. Have, have the flat part right across the middle here. So We're using green wood for this so that it doesn't burn easily. I want to make it thin, but not too thin where it's not going to support the pot or the hook. So that's it there. That's perfect. That's what you're looking for right there. Nice and thin. For the bottom, we just want to make this into a steak. Nice and easy. That's probably good enough there. I'll just... 
There we go. Nice and sharp. That'll go into the ground, no problem. Oh, Metro, don't. What is that? That's crazy. What we want to do is carve some bird beaks uh, in the back of it on varying heights, varying levels to carve the bird beak. I want to put it on the back of my, actually it doesn't matter what you put it on, but I, I normally put it on the back. You can put it on either side. I'll put my knife on a diagonal, hit it a bunch of times. This is pretty dense wood. I don't think uh, I'm going to go through it very easily. So. And this baton is pretty lightweight, not hitting it too hard. So now you have to carve it out. You have to carve out the bird beak. Carve out the notch. So you want to carve out everything. And I did not baton in far enough, so I'll have to do it again. Or I can carve it in. But carve out everything except for the top a little triangle that you've made. And then that's going to become what rests on your pot hook. So I'm just going to go again and put on a little bit more. And kind of on an upwards angle too so that it goes in and up and it's held in better when it goes on the pot hook or the pot hook holder rather. You don't want to go far in because you don't want to really weaken the integrity of it. Okay, we're going to check that out and see if it needs to be raised or lowered. And if it does, I'll put some more notches in it. Just less than half of the thing full of water, and then I want to use that water later on for tea. So the ground is pretty soft, especially around here because of the fire, which is good. So maybe I'll stick it over here so nobody trips on it. She's in there, pretty good. There's the pod hook. Holds pretty good without anything on it. It's all just friction fit, stuck into the ground. And I feel like I do need to go higher. I don't need feel like it, I do need to go higher. It's obvious. So we'll put one lower, and then we're gonna have to move this anyway because that's not even getting any of the fire there. So put it over here. Maybe if I put it on a steeper angle, I won't have to make another notch. Gotta be careful doing that. Yeah, yeah, she's got to be raised up. Okay, no problem. I'm just gonna make another one. I've already marked my X out just by scoring it like this. Carving it out is just as simple as stopping halfway, switching your blade over. So you're carving out the actual parts you need to be carving out. I did not, eh? It's helpful if you use your hand on the blade. It's like you can see my hand is really just. Oh, sorry about the autofocus, son of a gun. See my hands way up here working. That's how you have control when you're trying to do a little bit of intricate things. Not that this is the most intricate in the world, but still very helpful. Okay, she done. And there we go. I like to do this better when I'm cooking eggs so that the eggs don't burn because most of the flames are hitting the bottom and boiling the water. The eggs are gonna be in the top and they're just cooking from steam. So let's get the eggs in there. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Please shine down. All right, we got some butter in there. Some water. I'm gonna melt it before I get my eggs in. Let's 
Llama Blanca. All right, she's buttery. Boom. These are farm fresh eggs. We're gonna put a little steak spice in there. A little or a lot, Brendan? A lot. All right, there we have it. Boom. Should be pretty good. All right, so the insert goes in, which is, you know, handy for the insert to go in. This is the way I've been cooking eggs ever since Brendan and I used to hang out up in Sault Ste. Marie. Okie dokes, she done. Folks. All right. All righty. All righty. Oh, Brennan, you got the curved spork, yeah, bud. I stole that from Joe. Nice, nice. We'll, we'll split it this way so we each get uh, half of the good yolk. Yeah, sounds good. Split the other one. All right, wrecked the other one. Wrecked it. Oh, it shouldn't stick too much either. Do you have a plate, Brennan? Is this yeah, a I was gonna say, where's that? Uh, bacon plate? Yeah, it'll work. Bacon plate? Come on, baby. No stickums. Might come out. No stickums to the pan. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, buddy. That. Oh, you're not getting it all. There we go, bud. That's all right, eh? Beauty. Nice. Here you go. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to stop talking. Do you need any hot water for anything burned in? <laughs> no, I'm all right. Thank you, though. All righty. I got the stomach ease. Um, licorice root or maybe fennel, maybe fennel, taste of fennel. I actually really like it. And I, uh, I'm gonna eat this with my hands. Out of choice. Not, but not because I don't have a sport. So I think if you guys have kids that are into this stuff, or even if you're just starting to get into this stuff or whatever, <clears throat> you want a little easy project to do, make up one of these little pot hangers. I think that's called the Burtonsville Rig. If I'm not mistaken, I originally learned about it in Morris Kahansky's book called Bushcraft, Northern Bushcraft back in the day, and uh, it's it's cool, it's easy to do. If you're in a place that has solid soil or rock or sand or something like that, or something that you can't stick the, the, the log into, the, the stick into, you can take a big log like this, put your prop log here, and then stick rocks or a bigger log right here kind of sandwich it in and that works too so you don't actually have to stick it right into the ground you could also use a forked stick in front of the log so here's your prop log and you kind of stick it in the ground as much as you can say it still needs a little bit more support you can take a fork stick and stick it right there you know what I'm saying and that works really well too a bunch of different variations you can do a bunch of different um, little techniques but I think it's a cool little project super easy something to have fun with your kids or like I said if you want to just kind of learn some stuff Oh. I feel it go all the way down. It feels so good. It like, coats my stomach. It does feel good. Thanks again, Shane. Everything's dried off. I'm really glad I hung it up early, like I said, because that sun really hasn't come back at all. So, I'm going to do the same thing tonight. I'm just I'm a little damp on the outside. I'm just not going to zip it up all the way. So, as it is, this is unzipped halfway. That's probably what I'll do. I'll probably leave it that way. I wonder if I can tie it up. Yeah, I, want, I really want to kick all the grass and sticks and everything right inside the bivy after you've rolled it up. Really adds the insulation and the comfortableness. Come on, Joseph. All right, there we go. Sleeping pad lost quite a bit of air throughout the night. A little flimsy. I definitely don't want it. This for now. I definitely don't want it completely inflated because then it's a little hard for my liking. Nice. 
I bought this sleeping pad from Brendan. Brendan works at MEC at MEC, which is again the Canadian equivalent of REI. MEC, MEC stands for Mountain Equipment Co-op. So there are dividends and owners and all sorts of stuff like that. Pay a $5 fee to shop there. Anyways, Brendan's worked there for years and I bought this sleeping pad from him there probably six, six or so years ago. Actually, same thing with this sleeping bag. I only got this a couple years. Actually, I think he got this for me as a gift. This might have been a gift from him for my birthday. What a nice guy. I gave him a knife today for his birthday. Uh, Mora Garberg. Okay. That's good. You know what I might do? Just so no creepy crawlies get in there in the daytime. Just give her a little zip up. Just close her up. I'll just have to remember before I go to bed to keep it halfway down. Okay, I'm gonna get this guy back in there and I'm also going to start thatching that a little bit better. Close up the uh, the light spots coming through. Even though the log is pretty wide and it blocks my whole body, it's important to thatch the top too. Which I didn't do yesterday at all just because I was needed to block off the sides, but. It's important to get it all up in there. That way everything will just shed right off. And again, that's why you start at the bottom, on top, 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 and it all just sheds onto the next piece and down. We're getting there, almost done. And this is where the prominent wind's coming through, so she's good. I just a little bit up here, and I think she's done. So I didn't really know the deal whether or not Dave wanted this thing left up. This is his parents' property, by the way, where we are. So I don't know if he wanted this shelter left up or what. So I had planned on taking it down, but he just told me that he's gonna come out and camp in it. So I'm just gonna build it up a little bit better, put some sticks on here, keep all the debris from flying off in the wind. And um, yeah, it's cool. It's cool that you're going to get some use out of it too. So very cool. Debris. The rest of the bacon's in there. She's almost done. This front piece is probably pretty, pretty done. Oh, buddy. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy how that happens, eh? Ooh. Help yourselves, boys. Oh, they're a little warm. A little warm. Hot, hot, hot. Yeah. Oh. Woo! We're all just hanging out at the fire there. Dave's been back for quite a while. I think I want to string up my hammock. Let's take a little snooze. It's midday. It's almost three o'clock. We've. Uh, it's fun. It's fun fellowshipping. It's fun having the people to talk to and just sit around the fire. I had a couple beers already and stuff, so. Okay, I'm gonna see if this is uh, long enough to reach from that tree to that tree, and if not, I'll find another location. talk to you guys in quite some time it's after six now we had supper Dave made a brisket for us it was pretty nice I made a decision to put the camera away and just kind of focus on hanging out so so it's 
getting to be that time where we stoke up the fire, sit around, and have a couple beers. <sighs> Having a good time. Very good time. You want blooper? You want blooper reel? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, my whole videos, all my videos are bloopers. Yeah. Like, oh, <laughs> all right, what are you rocking? What do you got that one? You're pretty pleased with that one, eh? Yeah, the Abe Herb. Abe Herb out of Kitchener. Out of Kitchener. 1857. Coast style lagered ale. Crispy, but also has a lot of flavor at mm -hmm. the end. It's a good one. Yeah, I was very surprised. I'm about to open this. Confluence Brewing Company Rock Double IPA Rock Dodger. And I got sent that again from Buddy Shane in Iowa. She is uh, brewed in can by Confluence Brewing Des Moines. Out of Des Moines. So she's 8.7. <laughs> <laughs> That's a night ender. Let's see what time it is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it might not be cracking. <laughs> Alright, 7 o'clock. Oh, yeah. That's alright. Sun will be down in an hour, no one will know. Please try to remind me a step on this one. Yeah. <laughs> I tend to get carried away. Easy on the milk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a hoppy beer. Oh, man. She's a, a hoppy beer, like a multi caramelly hoppy. Full flavored. Mmm. Oh, buddy. That is. Mm hmm. That's malty. Like a thick apple juice. Mm, yeah. She's pretty thick, eh? Yeah, that is a thick beer. It's sharp, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. Smooth. A little bit of bite with the IPA. All right, guys, I'm calling her quits for tonight. It's just past nine. It's, oh, it's 9.37. So I'm headed into bed tonight. I gotta get up early and bounce. I gotta get home early, so I'll probably be in here at five or six in the morning. Have a good night. Wish me luck.